Ever since I played the Master Chief Collection on PC for the first time a year ago, I've come to understand why Halo is so revered for its multiplayer offerings. It's less that the games are nearly flawlessly balanced and more that they offer up such a wide variety of experiences by manipulating different rules and variables. Quick play could take you anywhere. One moment you could be playing 2v2 SWAT Slayer, the next you could be playing Oddball on a map with gravity hammers for everyone, after that you could be playing a party game like Infection with 12 other people. Mechanically, I think Halo Infinite's multiplayer is the best that it's ever been. I like my multiplayer shooters fast and furious, and that's exactly what Infinite is, because the movement speed is high and the TTK is low. The weapons are just about perfectly balanced, mainly because sheer power is generally offset with something, whether it's ammo counts or a specific quirk, or even that you just have to find the weapon on the map. The maps themselves are one of the reasons why the game works so well. While some are symmetrical and others are not, they all have a distinct flow and there is not a meter of blank unused space even on the big team battle maps. Elemental attacks return from the other Halo games but their uses are made more obvious. Plasma weapons break down shields and kinetic weapons are effective against flesh, which makes for a really satisfying one-two punch when you blow someone's shield with an overcharged plasma pistol shot before switching to a sidekick to insta-kill them with a headshot. There's also a couple new element types. One is called Shock, which is nice for stopping vehicles for a few seconds, and the other one is called Hard Light, which I really failed to understand the utility of. It feels like Kinetic Plus in that it seems less effective against shields, and then as soon as they're broken down, the guns become unstoppable, seeming far more effective against flesh than even the Kinetic guns. Still, that's not exactly an important problem. What's more important is that Halo Infinite feels like it's missing a lot of things, and I think those things are game modes. Quick Play only has a rotating selection of four game modes across seven maps, which gets old pretty quickly when the matches really only last for five or ten minutes. Outside of Quick Play, you have things like Free For All Slayer, Fiesta, Big Team Battle, and SWAT Slayer, which has been renamed to Tactical Slayer, but the issue I have with that, and it's a hell of a nitpick, I get it, is that those aren't just available in Quick Play. I play Quick Play when I really don't care what I want to play, I enjoy being surprised. It's rare that I just want to play Fiesta, or SWAT, or Big Team battle, I just want to play something. Still, there's not a ton of game mode variety, and that wouldn't usually be a problem but for two things. Halo Infinite doesn't feel like it has a major learning curve, which isn't a horrible issue because if a game's easy to learn, then all that's left is strategy, and there really isn't much in the way of progression, barring the battle pass, which only gives cosmetic items anyways. The closest Halo Infinite gets to real progression is in the ranked mode, which is fun enough but only uses the same modes and maps from quick play, so that gets boring too. I'm also very concerned with how Halo Infinite handles packet loss, or more accurately, doesn't handle packet loss. This could literally just be me, but it seems like if there's the slightest amount of network instability, my player character starts jittering. So if there's a lot of network instability, like there is on the college dorm Wi-Fi I have to deal with for seven months out of the year, the game is difficult to play to say the least, if not impossible. The only reason why I'm mentioning this is because I don't think I've had this happen with any other multiplayer game on that internet connection. Not Modern Warfare, not Battlefield 2042, not Forza Horizon 4 or 5, or even any game from the Halo Master Chief Collection. It's just Halo Infinite, and that's surprising because it's not like the game is overly complicated. I'm gonna reserve my judgement on the network performance because it could be performing poorly based on something with my setup and not the game itself. In that case, the only real issue with the game is that there isn't more of it, which is a telltale sign that the game itself is pretty damn good. The gameplay is nigh perfect, there just isn't that much else to say about it, but I do think that the game is brought down a little bit by the lack of variety in maps and game modes. Still, being a live service, time could be very kind to Halo Infinite, and in a few months, perhaps Infinite will once again have the variety that it deserves. Even without that, it's one of the finest multiplayer shooters that I've played in the last 10 years, and for that reason, I'm giving Halo Infinite's multiplayer an 8 out of 10. I have to admit that Halo campaigns have never been that fun to me, at least not fun enough for me to revere them in the way that FPS fans seem to revere them. 
The narratives that drive Halo campaigns are usually really enjoyable, but they typically fall apart when you start to actually play them. Level design usually ranges from just passable to downright awful, the weapons have never felt particularly nice to use, and the games always seem to have this fixation on putting players in situations that were unfair to say the least. I'm telling you all this mainly because I really wasn't sure how to actually begin this review of Halo Infinite's campaign, but it's also because Halo Infinite is the first Halo campaign I've actually actually been able to enjoy, mostly. In part, it's because the intent of the weapon design is made abundantly clear. Kinetic weapons like the MA-40 assault rifle and the sidekick kill enemies instantly upon landing an unshielded headshot, while energy weapons like the pulse rifle and plasma pistol drain energy shields. It's a game that heavily rewards understanding of its combat loop and the skilled play that results from one's exploitation of it. I'm not gonna lie though, I am struggling to think of other things I loved about Halo Infinite's campaign gameplay. The switch to an open world structure is something that I have very mixed feelings on, for example. I loved the sense of isolation that it created, and I loved the emergent gameplay and tactical freedom that naturally comes with an open world, but an open world is only as good as how many toys you have to play with in it. Infinite isn't really missing weapons or vehicles, it's missing systems and terrain variety. All too often I find that my base capture strategy turns into sniping from a distance because everything is so open. I also found that I just didn't care to finish many of the side quests, and when I did try, it was just boring feeling more like busy work than actual interesting progress. That's because the side quests never really seem to unlock rewards that feel worth it. Spartan cores give you equipment upgrades, but they always seem to boil down to minor things like more durable shields or an extra charge for your thruster. High value targets give you weapons that are apparently better, except I really can't tell the difference at all. And FOBs are actually useful sometimes because they give you a place to give yourself weapons and spawn vehicles, but if they weren't close to an existing mission objective, then I just didn't see a reason to capture them. It's why I chose to beeline toward the end of Halo Infinite's main quest instead of trying to savor all the side content. In addition, every mission and side mission gives a form of XP called Valor, but it's all used to unlock new weapons, vehicles, and soldiers to spawn in an FOB, which is sort of useless when the soldiers die off quickly, when you can find pretty much any weapon you want on the battlefield anyways, and instead of using a vehicle, you could always just sling yourself around with a grappling hook, or better yet, fast travel to the places you need to go to. Speaking of grappling, hooks, let's talk about this game's equipment situation for a second. Halo Infinite offers four pieces of equipment to the player. A grappling hook, a threat sensor, a placeable shield, and a thruster. That's the order in which they're given to the player, and I honestly wonder if that was on purpose, because that also doubles as an ordering of relative usefulness. The grappling hook is easily the most useful part of the entire equipment set, because not only can it be used to fling yourself around the map at mock speed, it can also be used to grab things like explosive barrels and weapons that are just out of reach. The threat sensor is alright because it shows cloaked elites as well as the usual card trick of showing enemies behind walls, and then I barely use the drop wall because it shatters after a few hits, and I actively hated using the thruster because it just didn't fling me around fast enough to meaningly avoid attacks for very long. In addition, sometimes the gameplay just gets boring. I've been told that Heroic is the best difficulty to play on, and yes, I feel that the campaign is practically perfectly balanced when played on that difficulty, but I also find that Halo Infinite sometimes just turns into a slog. It's all down to regenerating health. I think the game would have been better off adapting something like what the Battle Royale genre did, where the player picks up health and shield kits that take a couple seconds to activate on player input, and then instantly restore a portion of health. Instead, when confronted with overwhelming firepower, you have to hide behind cover, peek out, take a couple of pot shots, get back into cover, wait for a while so your shields can regenerate, then do it all over again until enough things die, assuming that you aren't rushed first. If there's any saving grace for the campaign, it's the story and its presence. Presentation. It presents a far future vision of humanity once again fighting a battle for a super weapon that they are obviously losing against a force more threatening than they've ever seen. In other words, a setup straight out of Halo CE. What's different this time around is that it's obvious that whatever battle that humanity fought was brutally lost, leaving the player to pick up the pieces, and that the story almost feels like it's told in third person. Sure, the man that you play as is Master Chief, but because there's really nowhere else to go with his character, he plays the Dumbledore to the weapons Harry Potter. The weapon is a bit like a child, slowly learning about the world around them and their place in it, whereas Master Chief is there to teach them about it, with his decades of experience in warfare. I found it to be a particularly refreshing take on a sci-fi shooter, especially 
especially with one that has as much lore and legacy as Halo, serving as a coda to Master Chief's saga, even though I can't help but feel that it's at least a little derivative of stories like The Mandalorian and 2018's God of War. And then there's the villains. I really don't know what their exact motivation is, it could be to beat the living shit out of everything they see for the sake of it, but I liked them a lot. The Banished as a faction feel like a ragtag group of different races fighting for different reasons, some for bragging rights, some for money, others because it was the only place where they wouldn't be literally eaten alive. The most compelling characters in The Banished are Eshram's lieutenants and Eshram himself, who, in the face of an almost guaranteed victory on the Halo ring, will drop everything to square up against Master. Master Chief for no other reason than honor, even going so far as egging him on to kill the fuck out of them just for the sake of a good fight. What makes Halo Infinite's narrative memorable is that juxtaposition of the no-nonsense duty-bound nature of Master Chief and the rest of the UNSC against the Banished, who are so focused on proving ones were through battle above all else that they may as well have been pulled straight from samurai fiction. So while I loved parts of the Halo Infinite campaign, namely the character conflicts, the weapon balance, and the enemy enemy design, I really thought that other parts of the gameplay needed some work, like the open world design, and the equipment selection, and the health situation. The campaign isn't bad or anything, but it just feels like it's not innovating enough, and that's why I'm giving Halo Infinite's campaign a 6.5 out of 10. Yeah. Come into my world.